Hey everyone, I want to quickly highlight a discussion that I had publicly online yesterday with an account on X. The account is by Jason. He is somebody who is posting about EV stuff and NEO in particular. As I understand, he's also quite bullish on NEO as a company, but that doesn't matter so much here. Uh, what I want to highlight here is uh, the topic which is about battery swapping um, and profitability. And a topic that uh, sometimes I see in the comment section is whether or not those partnerships uh, will monetize in a way that NEO is doing with uh, all of the other car companies. So uh, this is a quite interesting exercise here that Jason has done. So that's why I want to also bring it here on the channel in case some of you guys are not on X. I understand that everybody is following either Jason or me on X, but I think you guys should do. And uh, anyways, uh, I want to quickly go through this here. So first, um, he's uh, making the, the points about the current situation, which is that 600,000 NEOs are currently on the road and uh, currently it's average, averaging around 30 swaps per day and 60 swaps per day are the break even points. How do we know? Because NEO is publicly talking about these um, indicators that we got from earnings calls and other um, events where the, the, the you know people in charge are speaking about these things. So. Um, he goes on here um, that he says uh, power swap stations are likely to become profitable once they are at 1.2 million battery swap enabled vehicles. You know, that's based on the maths here. Uh, basically, they need to double uh, the current swaps capabilities. No, not ca capabilities, the actual swaps in order to break even, right? So um, now the question is, how do we get to 1.2 million? Uh, so currently NEO delivers between 25,000 to maybe 40,000 cars per month in the future, right? This is where uh, the management is guiding towards. We're not entirely there yet, but maybe close to the 25K tomorrow, we'll see. Um, so he's saying that would translate into 15 to 24 months to reach the, cu the cumulative 1.2 million vehicles necessary, because then, uh, you know, you would have the situation that you have uh, a um, an average utilization rate of battery swap stations that would make them become profitable. Now, that's just for NEO, okay? But there is also something which we need to consider that, of course, NEO will not stop building battery swap stations. In fact, um, they plan to build 1,000 swap stations per year. So for each new swap station, obviously, that's adding new cap um, capacity. And therefore, you pay basically need actually even more cars on the road. Otherwise, um, the average utilization is falling, okay? So he makes a couple of assumptions here. Um, what does he say? Around 625 to 2000 new swap stations over the next 15 to 24 months. So this would increase the, the number of stations by approximately 1.24. Now what's the total number mm. of stations by a Okay, so yeah, that brings up the, the, the relation between swap stations and cars and the average swaps per day would decrease to 35 to 48. Um, so yeah, that's what he's describing. If we are adding more swap stations, um, you basically, uh, you have a, a lower average of utilization. So he's making the case here that um, you would need more help for selling cars in order to finally get to the break-even point and he said um, the swap partners would set, would need to sell around 240,000 to 500,000 vehicles in order to bring the network to break even. Um, so this is on top of what NEO would be doing, right? Just assuming NEO keeps the sales like that and they need and, and they would keep the battery swap station built out um, like here assumed in this example. Obviously there's a gap to profitability, who can close that, right? And now he brings in the partners in here. So say, saying that uh, they need to fill that gap and um, we, um, we would need a, a total of uh, 1.4 million swap en enabled vehicles on the road. Currently, NEO has six swap partners. Uh, we've got strong sales records. Each of the partners sells 5,000 units per month. That's 30,000 additional units per month that would be swappable. And so it would take them eight to 17 months to sell 240,000 to 500,000 vehicles. So that's exactly the gap which would be required um, in order to you know, break even, given the fact that NEO keeps on scaling like with the assumptions here and that they keep on um, building out the battery swap stations. So 
Um, that's obviously on the lower side, 240,000. Um, but I think these are fair estimations. Um, to be honest, I'm also tracking that in my personal business case, where I, uh, which I have published with the, the patrons. And in there, I also have a line, which is basically uh, the same relationship, the relationship between the cumulative fleet and uh, the number of swap stations. And you can see that NEO kind of uh, has started to, uh, at some point, keep that as, as at a, a certain average, right? And so I think it's fair to make these assumptions. Um, I think I like this little exercise here by Jason. And I think so far these assumptions all sound quite um, realistic and are in line with also my personal expectations uh, so far. Um, so now to give you a little bit of a reference, I've, I've um, not only retweeted this, but I've also answered in this uh, tweet here and said like, because many people have no idea like how big these partners are for NEO. Um, I've posted this one earlier, uh, how big those uh, companies are in China that are actually selling, uh, become a partner of NIO. So one here is Geely, that's the first blue bar, then Chang'an, then Cherry. These are just a couple, so the dark blue is highlighted as a possible um, future partner. Um, there are a couple of more which are not um, coming up here. This is uh, basically sales numbers of uh, Q1 in 2024. So that's it's actually a, a, a quarter in which not many cars are being sold, right? But um, those uh, companies together, uh, just highlighting those three companies here, have sold 1.3 million cars uh, in that quarter together, right? So if we're assuming we need to get those 30K monthly um, cars, as Jason is saying in his tweet, in order to over time get to those 240,000 additional units, um, that would be less than 1% of the sales which they are making here. So it's a fairly conservative estimation in my views, in my view, and that's showing that um, it is a very likely scenario that these battery pa um, partnerships, battery swapping partnerships over time lead to um, the break even point of the battery swap network once these cars coming online. But I'm person because I'm personally expecting them to be more than 30,000 sales per month of all of these different partners. You know, not all of them are even on the chart here. Um, and as you can see, they are making really, really big volume. Now, one additional question I got here, when would this happen? Well, we don't know because, you know, that's the issue with the battery swap partnerships. We essentially don't know a lot other than they have signed those partnerships. But uh, in my opinion, we could expect this to happen uh, be between 2025, 2026 and 2027, depending on each company, like when have they signed the partnership, when they've started with the R&D, what's their current funnel, how fast are they? There are there will be differences between Jili and Chang'an and Cherry and so on. Some might be fast movers, some might be slower, but I think towards the end of 2025, we might have a chance at the first partner model. Um, so that's, we'll be adding cars to the swap stations and uh, 2026 very likely in my opinion in 2027 for sure. Um, so in the past we had five to eight years of cycles until a new car model comes out but now you know NEO provides the technology, the platform and everything and they just need to put a design on top, get the uh, manufacturing up and, and spinning and stuff. So I think between two and three years um, of a time frame is realistic for that. And then I agree with Jason, this might help for the break even point of battery swapping. Um, be aware, this is mainly just for the services, right? This is not including the benefits of uh, the partners also building out um, their own battery swap stations, maybe on top of that, maybe paying NEO license fees for the R&D. There is not included that NEO can still do battery um, uh, grid balancing with the battery swap stations and so on and so on. So, but you know, just some valid facts here, in my opinion, how uh, these partnerships can be monetized in the future and uh, what we can expect in terms of timeline for profitability for that. So thanks for watching. See you in my next videos.